A couple of years ago, the Royal Welsh he disappeared out of the arena. June went to find him, and he was actually in the candy floss stand. But he wasn't just in the stand, he was in the candy floss machine. And June brought him back, and he uh, he was the only pink Harris Hawk in the country at the time. It took us about a week to get all the sugar off him. But he's a great character, but the one thing about Rupert is that he suffers from Tourette's. And he does swear a lot if you don't do it right. And um, the Harris Hawk, when they live in America, you will find them living in quite large family groups, maybe maybe 15, 20 birds all living together and hunting as a pack. And it's reckoned to be the second most successful pack hunter in the world. You love Rupert. 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 Never mind about looking at hey. the craft little devil. Come see the people over here. Yeah, you can see the people in the cheap seats. I see this funny looking log over here, Ruth. So, what we could do with, to show you just how friendly the Harris Hawk happens to be, Ruth! Joe. Oh, you missed her. <laughs> uh, but they're great characters, relatively easy to train, and the nice thing, of course, is that you can fly two or three of them at the same time without them having a punch up, which is pretty useful. It's a prey don't like to mix with other species and they tend to, they tend to be a little bit aggressive towards them. And what we can do with is one or two volunteers. Uh, we can, what about this young lady here then? Uh, Chico. Where's our special glove, Jim? Oh, well done. Right. What's your name? Verity. Pop your hand in there, Verity. Well done. Can you whistle? No. Oh. Come on. Jump behind you. Mid, too late. Don't say that then. You talk too much. Very cheeky. Come over here quick. Let's get a bit of cheeky. Right. Come away from that speaker a bit. There we are. Right. Bit of chicken in your hand. Here comes Rupert. Yep. Whoa. Gotcha. Well done. Excellent. Do you reckon you can take him back to that perch for me? Have a little walk over. That's it. Shall we give Verity a bit of a clap? Well then, excellent. Thank you, darling. Ah, and who's this one then, I wonder? Now, we don't know each other, do we? What do you mean, yes? It's about to keep a secret. Oh, right. Right, Jinky, let's have a look here. You pop this bit of trick in, you? Watch out behind you. Oh, there's that group, but he's coming. Here he comes. Hold your hand out nice and high. Group, there it is. Look. Go on then. He's the wrong side now, isn't he? Let's come over here with Katie. Let's have another go. Now then, listen, Rupert. Oh, <laughs> my crafty dip. Right, you're for it now, mate. Right, you hold on to that bit of chicken. There we are. What? You bugs! You need it! What's going on? Shall we get into map as well? Well done. Thank you very much. Excellent. Okay. So we, we better have a we better have a boy, haven't we? Have we got a boy that would like to have a go? Oh, Crate in your hundreds of them. You pick one out, June. Right. Okay. What's your name? Sam. Pop your left hand in there, Sam. Get a little bit of which Rupert goes up on the perch. A bed, a little bit of chicken in there, no pinching it, it's for him, mind. Hold your arm out like a big branch of a tree, and we wait for a Rupert to appear. <coughs> We're on strike today, are we? Too windy for you, is it? Shall we go down the pub instead? Come on, Rip. Be a good lad. In he can. Oh, oh. Gotcha. Can you hold him well on your own? Done. Well done. Give our Sam a round of applause. Well done, Sam. And if you just drop your hand down nice and low, he'll jump on the floor for you. Thank you very much. Well, well done. done. Now, I, I tell you what, Rupert's very fond of the ladies. Can't let the kids have all the fun. Have we got a mum that would like to have a go? Come on in, mum. Well done. We don't care how big the kids are here. And how old are you, little girl? 21? <laughs> are you sure? Right. Have we got a glove? I've got the other one over there. Let me pinch his glove. Well done. Where's he off to now? What's your name? Sam? No, not a Sam. No, oh, Dad gets about a bit, doesn't he? Right, <laughs> right Sam. Okay, can you whistle? Oh, 
never, never trust a whistling woman or a crowing hen. There we are. Nice long arm, Sam. Boom, touch it. Well done. Excellent. Come on this back fly to anybody. And if you drop your hand down nice and low, Sam, have a curtsy, he'll jump onto the glass for you. No, actually, we need him up on the perch. Oh, sorry, Sam. Come on the front of him and just put your hand by his tummy and say, hello, hello, Rupert, and he'll jump up on your hand then. That's it. <laughs> oh, no, you've got to introduce yourself properly, make an effort, you know, come on. Uh, you got it this time. Have you noticed Roger's picked a lady with a low top? <laughs> hey, I'm not daft. Hang on, Sam. I think I've got a bit of chicken here. Let's try, let's try that again. There we are. Oh, you're there now, Rupert. <laughs> Well done. Excellent, Sam. And drop your hand down. Well done. Should we give it a, hand, a bit of a hand for being a sport? Well done, Sam. Ooh, ooh, thank you, Rupert. Well done. Wait, wait, wait. Where are you going now, Rupert? Oh, up the tree. Okay. Put him back over there a moment. I'll put him to bed. Um, should we put him to bed? Yeah. Has he done a bit, you think? Yeah. All oh, right. Hang on. Check him down there. Yeah. Puppy. No. Look at that. Ice like a hawk. Bedtime, Rupert. You wish you could get the kids into bed as easy as that. All you have to do is keep them in a box. Right. Now we're okay. going to need a very special volunteer. Now you've got to be a certain height. Legs have got to be a certain height. Uh, you might be about right. Do you want to come out? Are you brave? You are. He looks terrified already. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Josh, where are you from, Josh? Bargoid. Bargoid. Just because you don't know, your dad said you're on Bargoid. Let's walk over here a bit. Right, Josh. I'm going to hand you over to Rog, and he's going to tell you a few little things. I'm going to get a little bird out to have a bit of fun. Right, then, Josh. Are you a fast runner? You are. That's what I like to hear. Okay, we're going to have a race between you and our bird called Dax. That's her name. And Dax is a red-tailed buzzard from North America. You can tell she's American because she's noisy. No Americans here. Right. Uh, okay. So, to make sure... First of all, who likes bunny rabbits? Uh, do you know what? In here, we've got ever such a cute little bunny rabbit. Floppy ears, bright eyes, shiny nose, twitchy little tail. Put a rope around his neck, <coughs> and Josh is going to pull him out, and Dax is going to catch that rabbit with his with his sharp talons. Oh, it's not a real rabbit, don't be that. Right, what do we know? <laughs> Sadist. Right, right, what we have done is a little bit of string here. All right, attached to our bunny rabbit, wherever oh, there he is. Right. Now, just to make sure that you run your fastest, and she flies her fastest, I'm going to tie a big bit of chicken on the back of your neck, Josh. All right? It's all right, Dad. Where's Dad? Where's he? I can tie a bit on him. Yeah. He's already nice, isn't he? Oh, Dad. We did something wrong. No, we better not do that. Bit of health and safety. Right. Do you reckon, young Josh, that you can run from here? See that little spike in the corner there on the end of the rope? Do you reckon you can run from here to there before she catches the rabbit? What do you think? What if we give you a bit of a start? Yeah? Think, think you can do it then? Good man. Right. Come out here a bit, Josh. Get the string nice and tight so you're ready to go. Hang on. Wait for it. Don't pull it up. Yet. Whatever you do. Right. I'm going to say ready, steady, go. And you've got to leg it and run down to there. Don't fall down the bank, all right? Whatever you do. What you need to do, Rog, is after you've told him everything, you go to stand on the end of the bank, and if he looks as though he's going down the bank, grab him. Shall I? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to say, ready, steady, go, and then you're going to run, okay? Now, if I shout stop, that means she's caught the rabbit, and you have to stop, Josh, okay? Good man. Oh, one other thing. Put your other hand on your bottom in case she misses the rabbit. <laughs> Right, now while Roger's giving Josh all his instructions, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Dax. Oh, Dax yeah. is a 10-year-old American red-tailed buzzard, and we acquired her about eight years ago. And we bought her originally as a hunting bird. So we took her out and we showed her some rabbits, and she watched the rabbits run away. So we took her and showed her some pheasants, and she watched the pheasants fly away. Roger, can you give me a hand a moment? 
Uh, she watched the pheasants fly away. So was a hunting bird. She was rubbish. So we thought, we know. We'll buy her a husband. We bought her a lovely husband called George. We put them in a nice big aviary together. And for about two weeks, they cuddled up together. And we thought, this is good. We're going to have baby red tail. At the end of the second week, I went down. And George was gone. She'd eaten him. All that was left was his bell on his leg. One of those. And his big yellow feet. So we've decided now that we've got the only anti-blood sport gay red tail in captivity. So we've spent the last eight years chasing children with her. And she is really good at it. I'm going to be in trouble getting her straps off. We need to take her straps off just in case she goes up into a tree and gets tangled in a branch. Thank you, Roger. That's great. Okay. Are we ready? Okay, so when we say on your marks, get set, go, you go run as fast as you can. I know. If the hawk catches the rabbit before Josh gets it, his dad is going to take us to the side of the stand. Mine's a gallon. Yours is a gallon, right? Okay. Right. right, Josh. Are we ready? Wait for it. Are we ready, Dax? On your marks, get set, go, Josh! Come on, Dax, Josh! Josh.
Now very often, she will just sit for a moment or two and get her bearings, and she'll just shake her feathers. We call it rosy. And you can see that she's got very long pointed wings, designed for sprinting. Uh, off the fist, pretty quickly, and then she likes to gain height. And height to a falcon means everything. The higher she goes, the faster she can come down. What are you looking at? A bear now. No chasing seagulls, you behave yourself. So off she goes into the breeze. And she's going to get a bit of air speed and hopefully a little bit of height as well. Hello. Nice to see you. No chasing seagulls. Be a good girl. So she likes to burn off a bit of surplus energy to start with. Mind your heads coming through. Oh, nearly. Yes, I know it's a nice breezy day. Falcons love the wind because, of course, they're quite heavy birds for their size. And they like to use the wind to lift them up into the air with very few wind beats. And that's what she's trying to do, get a bit of height. Sometimes she's really sneaky and she'll fly out of the sun at me, which is a bit dodgy, isn't it? That's, that's, not, that's not playing the game, that's cheating. Yes, very good. Any chance of doing some work? Now, of course, she's only operating at about quarter speed at the moment. She's just playing, just having a float round. But when peregrines are flying and hunting properly, they are capable of diving, or stooping as we call it. Whoa! No, yeah, not yet. At 242 miles per hour. So they are incredibly quick. Come on, come and do some work. And the idea is to get the lure close to the falcon because she thinks she's going to catch it. And on really good days, if she pushes me, she's better than I am. <laughs> See her feet coming out, trying to grab the lure. <laughs> trying to grab the lure there. Come on, you sneaky old devil. Come on, mate. One more go this way. One more go the other way. Go on, you can do it. Mind your heads. Whoa. And we're going to give her a shout. Hey. Hey, cup time. Whoa. I don't think you were really trying today. I think you were just messing me around, weren't you? Just having a game. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hand her over to June. Now, this doesn't look a very important part of the training, but if we were out hunting with Quack Quack and she caught a partridge, she could carry one of those quite a long way. So she thought that we were going to steal from her every time she caught something. She'd get a bit cheesed off and start to fly away every time we went near her. And when we first had her at a year old, she was very, very nervous on the uh, on the newer. And uh, we thought perhaps the person who had it before uh, had rushed her a little bit. So it took you a fair few months to get her confidence. And what we do now is just let her sit there, have a look around, get her breath back, and then she'll start to eat that little bit of chicken that she's got tied to the new event. And when she's finished that, Jim will then hopefully just offer her another bit of food and with a bit of luck the falcon jumps up onto the uh, onto the glove. So she's uh, having a bit of a rest and now she's got both feet on the new which means she'll start to eat. Falcons never eat quickly to start with. They like to check out the sky because another falcon might be up there waiting to come down while she's uh, busy eating or an eagle might come in. Not many eagles in Wales, but there we are. Um, so she's going to have a little munch on that as a reward. And then June's getting a little bit of chicken ready for her. And if she's done her homework right, which I think she has, she will offer that bit of food and the falcon will then want to come back to her. And that's a pretty good place to be sat on the glove there. We get the falcon back. And if we don't hunt him, we also get a pirate as well. But in this case, we get a smelly old bit of leather. So she's nearly finished. And here she comes to do. Really elegant walking around by grass, isn't she? And up she jumps, and you can see that she's covering her prey with food with her wings and tail. 
know, she doesn't want you horrible luck to just see what she's got. She's a bit jealous about it. So June's going to feed her up, and then, of course, she'll pop the hood back on the falcon's head. Clean her face. Clean her face first, yeah. Yep, yep. Remember when your mum used to do that when you were a kid? I used to wipe your face when you were in Woolies. You know, put like that. Well done, well done. Right. I'll leave it with that. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little display. We'll be playing again at 3 o'clock, where we'll be playing some different bands for you. And um, we hope you'll come and join us and have a, have a join in with us. But uh, thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of the day at the castle. Catch you later. If you haven't seen us, we're just under the trees with the Blue Gazebos there. Come and ask some questions. Take some photographs.